Okay, in today's session of start to make it big, from scratch to make it happen, if everything went down and you have 29 days to make it happen, all right, to get 100K, is it possible? We have Samuel Leeds, a superstar property guru, a trainer, a YouTube maestro on the house today. And he's going to be telling you exactly what he will do. All right. So without further ado, Samuel, to you, do you want to introduce yourself quickly or, or put anything onto that? Go for yeah, it. Cool, man. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. Great to be here. I love your work and what you're doing on YouTube. Um, I, I guess I agreed to come on because I love challenges. So the idea of making an amount of money and an amount of time, just the, the, the buzz off the challenge. I mean, my background, I'm a property investor. I've been property investing for over a decade now. Can you believe it? And I have a training business, so I also teach people. I've been doing that for about four years. And um, I'm pretty successful. I'm as successful as a trainer. I'm, I'm successful as a property investor. But the thing is, though, Ed, you'll know this, success breeds success. So if, if, if you've, got, um, you've got a million pounds and you want to make a second million, it's much easier. If you've got 100,000 and you want to make a second 100,000, it's much easier than when you start from scratch. So, you know, it'd be interesting to, to, to brainstorm the best way to make a hundred thousand pounds starting from scratch. Starting from scratch. So you, you <laughs> lose everything yeah. and you have to start again with your skill set as you you've got, got to be careful because I'll turn this hypothetical conversation into a reality. I'll just go and do it. I think that would be a great idea. I could do that. I mean, I mean that would be that, that, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. I mean that, that that's again why you're here and, and I as I said, I really appreciate your time and I really respect your friendship and, and what you've been doing out there. So I, I just want people to know that you're you are one hundred percent the real deal. That the reason we're having this conversation is because you're you're going out and consistently testing what is possible. And I think what what's amazing, I think sometimes when people actually hear this and they'll think, Oh, that's just not a possibility. However, you know, I'm a big believer of, you know, you know, we've done over, you know, naught to a million in seven months on an online funnel, for example. I think naught, naught to, to 29 days to 100,000 is achievable in many different vehicles. And that's really kind of what this is all about. So go for it. What would you, what, what would you, tomorrow it happens, yeah, sure. where, what would you do? So, so what are the ground rules? Do I still have my reputation and my following or do I have absolutely none of that as well? What, what would you like? Of course, I'd love it. If I <laughs> so let's go from nothing. Let's go from nothing. So I've got no reputation. No one knows you've who got I no am. No reputation. You've got nothing. That that's going to be the best way. So that's the realist, isn't it? Because with your reputation where you are now, that that's again, that's not relating. Twenty four hours. So there you go. So 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 to know that anyone watching that you can t like that. That's why business is such a beautiful thing. Once you start actually doing it, and you see the vehicle working every single year that you stay in business, it gets easier. So for you to say that, I totally believe you, that you could, you're at a stage where you could do it in 24 hours with your contact base, with what you've got right now. So therefore, that being said, let's go to zero. Okay, so zero. Um, well, for a start, I think, if I was starting again from scratch and had 29 days to make 100,000 pounds, I would use property as a vehicle. Now, that's not to say that property is the best vehicle. It's just that that's what I know. And I think that you, 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 the way to make money, you know, find what you know already. Find what you're good at. If you're a good marketer, if you're a good um, property person, if you're good with business or stocks or what, whatever, then, then, then do what you're good at, what you know. So I'd do property. Um, I'd make 100 grand. Do I have to make it cash or can I make it in equity, i.e.? <sighs> I.e., if I bought a property, if I bought like a property and I made that much money in equity, or do I actually need it in my bank? Let's 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 see if you can do both. <laughs> let's see let's see which one is quickest. Yeah, I think okay. So the so 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 working backwards, the end goal really is I need to I need to create one hundred thousand pounds worth of value to somebody or to a business so i guess rephrasing the question is how could i in 28 days could i add 100,000 pounds worth of value to somebody and get them to trust that i can actually do that so to to, to believe in me okay um 
I think I'd have to, I'd have to just find a, a, a property deal. I'd have to go and find, I'd probably go to central London and I would find, I'd be looking at high end um, property investment development opportunities, commercial property in the millions. And I would have to agree on a heavily discounted price. And then I would go and find a buyer and I would charge a broker fee. And it, that broker fee would have to be a hundred thousand. It just must oh, be juicy nice. enough. So, so let's go back a couple of spaces. So, 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 so you're, you're basically saying find, find an asset, high, high valued asset. So that very high, very high valued asset. Yeah. So top end asset so yeah. that you, again, there's, there's more margin in that process. How, how do you then, how do you then, how, how do you lock off that? You, you know, you're going to say that you're going to stand for them. Yeah. And then get them a client. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, like, okay, I, I, I buy property. If someone said to me as an investor, Samuel, we've got a property, it's worth 10 million. However, we've negotiated to buy it for 9 million. The ROI is good. It's a good deal. It's a million pound below market value. We will let you have that property, but we want a 100,000 pound fee, finder's fee. I'm paying them 100,000 but I'm saving 900,000 still. So I'll happily pay the 900, I'll happily pay the 100,000 pounds. So what I would need to do in this situation is I'd need to become the introducer. So I'd need yeah. to find, I'd need to be, so if I only had 20, cause, 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 and this is what, this is what I, I ha have done in the past, but on, on a smaller scale, I've, I've found houses, you know, residential houses, HMOs, blocks of flats and pass them on. But the finder's fee is usually just like five grand, maybe 10 grand. But I think it would just be a case of having to, rather than messing around finding, because I could do that. I could just find lots of deals for five grand, 10 grand and sell them. But I think if you've just got 28 days uh, it, for the challenge, because if I get, if, if I just make 99,000 pound, I fail. Mm. So it, it's not just a case of I want to, I want to make money just because, and it rolls over. If I got to make a hundred grand, it's an all or nothing thing. It would just be a case of finding a deal that's good enough. That's going to be worth a hundred thousand pounds and then find an investor. So I'd be, so I'll be doing two things. I'd be one, I'll be grinding, going around, mixing with all the developers, going to agents, um, and I'll be putting offers forward and trying to find some very attractive property investments that I could get below market value. And then over here, I'd be going networking and I'd be looking for in high net worth individuals or businesses or, or companies that were looking to invest in property. And it would just be a case of in 28 days, could I find a good enough deal, find an investor, and then marry the two together. Mm. Oh, oh, that's solid. That'd be my plan. And, and I'm not saying that that's the best plan. Would, I don't even know for sure if I'd achieve it because it, it, it's quite a big, um, you know, it's, it's quite a big, uh, quite a big deal, but I probably could. If anyone could achieve it, it would probably be me. <laughs> but what would you think? I mean, in essence, it's quite a simplistic approach, right? What would stop people from, from taking action on that? I guess it would probably just be with that kind of a deal. Um, what would stop people is firstly knowing how to find a good enough investment property, how to negotiate a deal like that. And, and, and then how to find the people that will be looking for deals like that. It's just, everything comes down to knowledge. You know, people say money makes money and although money does make money to a point, what really makes money is creativity and the ability to be able to add value. Mm. That's what makes totally money. Agree. Mm. So why don't people like knowing that then, yeah. then uh, let, let's regress that back. So, so therefore you said you would start with something. The first thing you said, start with something that you love. Right. And so you start said that, you no, know. start with that you know. So therefore that, that being said, how did, how did you get into property? Um, I got into property because I, um, I, I went to a, I wanted to, I wanted to have freedom. I wanted to be financially free. And I went down to a local property investment club and met some property investors. Um, and, and then I, I bought my first house back in like 2008 kind of time when you could pretty much the banks were given out, given out free money. And I just leveraged highly, I highly geared myself and, and bought a property. I did it in a relative's name because I was too young to get a mortgage. And um, that, that was how I bought my first house. Because I, 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 I just figured that, I guess I just figured that it was the easiest, it was the easiest way to create wealth property for me because it's like, 
they can only build so many houses. We've only got so much land. We're on a small country. We're overpopulated already. The planet is overpopulated. So if you own houses and own land, you, no one can ever take that away from you. So that, I, I, you know, I think I just had a desire really as a teenager. And Where, and where does that desire come from though? Um, because it's, it's the desire. And the reason I say that is because look, I totally, I totally appreciate it. And I'm digging down so people can really like get it from a different point of view because yeah. as, and I'm not saying what, what you said is totally, totally spot on, right? In that niche, I totally get that. Find, find a high price, find that, negotiate that, hold it together and ba bang, you know, it's, it's, you're pretty much there. Yep. But, but you know, like, and, and so I'm sure you know this as, as spending time with your students, what's the difference that makes the difference with someone and someone like yourself to have that desire? Where does that, where, 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 can, where can someone implement that? Because what I find running our stuff is actually with more and more information available, it actually almost makes it worse than it was maybe, you know, like when you look at, I've just finished like um, watching the, the Lehman Brothers trilogy and what they've gone through to, bu- to build that, that sort of bank to where it was, that the kind of what they had to go through was so tough. And today is so much easier I'm always fascinated at what, what, where, I wonder where that desire came from. Like mm. What was the initial stimulation that thought property, bang, I'm going to go hustling at whatever age you did start hustling to go and get a mortgage. That, 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 that would be intriguing because I think if more people can get that from where you are now as a super successful guy, I think that with what you're saying is, is going to be the key for a lot of people for sure. Yeah, I think, I think everyone, everyone wants to win. You know, no one's, no one's, no one desires to be a loser. No one desires to work until they're 67 and then retire poor. No one desires. Everyone wants to win. And I mean, I don't know people that want to lose. If, if you're playing a board game or chess or Scrabble or you're playing tennis, you, you want to win. So everyone wants to win. I think the difference is some people are prepared to do whatever it takes and other people aren't prepared to do anything. That's, I think that's the difference. Everyone's got the desire. Do you, do you think so? I don't think they do. No. I really don't think they do. I want to say that they do. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I can't be late. I can't be late. I'm not sure if, if that would, would, if I totally, I, I'm with you because I think like, I, I'm willing to like do whatever it takes, you know? And yeah, but you've got the desire and the commitment. And, and so therefore, so, so therefore you're saying it's, it's the desire in everyone, but they're lacking what the commitment to yeah, because, actually, because the people, people that aren't successful, they're still got the desire because they'll still go to the petrol station and buy lottery tickets and scratch the numbers and hope. Okay. All right. So, so I, I respect they have a desire to win. They have a desire to be wealthy. They have a desire to be successful. But what they don't have is the, is the, um, persistence or the, uh, a, they're not prepared to do anything. They're not prepared to work for it. They're just waiting for something to fall on their lap. They're waiting for someone to give them a big break, not knowing that actually you, you're the person that gives yourself a break. They're waiting for the government to do something within the economy, which is going to help them, not knowing that they actually create their own economy. I totally agree. So, so where does your, so, so that being said, where does yours come from? Where, where's that? Where's that? Just a case of, I have a desire to win. I have a desire to, to be, where did it come from? (laughs) I, don't know. I think everyone has the desire. The difference is, <laughs> the difference is, I realized that the only person who's going to be able to make that happen is me. How did you realize that? This is what I love about this is that I'm, I break down like the individual, yeah. like there must have been a moment or something that happened. There mm. must be some, some, some. When I left school, I was working for my dad. And, and my dad, in fact, my dad used to say to me, you know, if you work hard enough with me, you know, you're about to live in a good house and, and this little stuff. So I left school. I was working for my dad. But within three months of working for my dad, no disrespect to my dad, awesome guy. But I realized this ain't going to make me successful. I'm not going to be wealthy working uh, I like this. As, a, as, a, as a DJ and doing magic tricks at kids' parties and being an entertainer wearing a colorful top with a bunny on it. I ain't never going to be a billionaire. Is that what your dad, is that what your dad was doing? Yeah. Oh, amazing. And that's so, what he kind of pushed me into. Now yeah. he helped me and he, yeah, he helped yeah. me and, and he, you know, got me pushing myself out of my comfort zone, thinking like an entrepreneur, telling that's me, you know, work hard and, and, and you'll be successful. But I, I remember thinking, geez, I've done what my dad said and I'm doing this and it's okay. And, I, you know, I don't hate it. I'm not making great money, but actually, if, 
if 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 you just follow what other people have got planned out for you, you're not going to be very successful because they haven't got a lot planned for you. Nice. So so I, I'm unlike him with that. So there, there's always in any interview I've ever done, there's always a point, a trigger where there's an overload of pain that that pushes someone onto a new journey. So do, do you think from that moment it was viewing your life? as you know someone's doing the best that they can your father looking after you you know got your back maybe Try, partly i remember also, i remember also i went uh, going to church and i still go to church now but a lot there was a lot of people within the church that had massive intentions they wanted to um set up charities and sponsor children and and, and buy houses for homeless people and all this and it almost felt like everyone in the church was almost like a full-time fundraiser they were going around saying trying to get money and i remember thinking can't can't someone in the church just be an entrepreneur and make money and then just write the checks and and I, this. and I remember my, I remember my, my pastor saying um, very competent guy pastor of the church you know competent great communicator very smart very intelligent and he 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 told me he said if I'd have chosen to be a businessman I'd be a millionaire that's what he said but I'm not because I've chosen instead to be a pastor of a church and I remember thinking really you know what why isn't anyone just getting wealthy and then and then helping people with with that money why isn't anyone doing that and then i just sort of thought well rather than saying why isn't anyone doing it maybe i'm the person that i've been waiting for maybe i should actually do that yeah, yeah so there's a lot of trigger points through through the journey and and why that happened and where did that desire come from i uh, it's very difficult to say but there's i think there's there's definitely you can i can look back and, and see trigger points for sure um but i just have a i just have a fire in my belly a deep desire to want to be the best me i can possibly be to want to make the most money to help the most people to impact as many people as i can um leave a legacy i mean it's just a desire and people even in my family now some people say when's enough gonna be enough you know i mean at the end of the day i started off buying houses last year i just bought a castle you know when, when's it when's it gonna be enough what next you you own a friggin' castle, like when is it going to be enough? And the answer for me is it will never be enough because if, it, if the moment it, the moment it becomes like it's enough is almost the moment that I give up because if I said, all right, now's enough and I'm I'm content now, I don't ever want to be content. But so so just just to play devil's advocate that on on that concept would would you say that that. Uh, therefore, where are you at on your happiness scale, your fulfillment scale of right now? I'm, I'm, a t I'm, I'm ridiculously happy. I'm like, so there, therefore, isn't that that it is enough, but you just want to maximise it all the time? Um, okay, it's almost like there's a, there's a, there's almost like a um, a contradiction, a, a beautiful contradiction, but but of, of being of being fulfilled with what you have and who you are, but then also loving the growth really ambitious for more and when you yeah. bring those two together you see if it's a case of oh i'm so miserable because i'm not a billionaire yet oh, i'm so miserable because i don't own a thousand houses i'm so miserable because i don't own a palace then that's a problem yeah you want to be, be be happy with what you have but then have a desire a desire to continually be the best version of yourself to, to be to be fitter to be healthy to be stronger to have more to be more to give more i think when you can kind of can you kind of marry those two together? Yeah, that, I agree. That, that, that's where, for me, that's where true happiness is. Yeah, uh, so I, I agree with that. I, I'm I not happy with where I'm at. And in fact, me and my business partner, whenever we meet, all we do is talk about how naff we are. Like when I meet with my business partner, Russell, my brother and the CEO of our company, all we do is we say, we're terrible at this. We're terrible at this. We're terrible at this. You know, we messed up there. We messed up here. That's all we talk about. We don't sit and say, wow, we made a million pounds last month, you know, which we did. And we did the month before and the month before. Like, but we, we don't pat ourselves on the back and say, wow, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I made a million pounds last month. I don't pat myself on the back. I just say, oh, man, I was terrible at that. I'm, I am, I'm my worst critic. But not, so, but not so much that you're not sleeping at night though, right? Oh, no. But no, you're, no. you're you're doing it from personal progression with yeah. an obsession to get better, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But then, then that's where the tension comes in again. Yeah, yeah I agree. An ambition to be better, but then also, yeah, a contentment. 
a counting, counting of blessings, yeah. gratitude with what I have, but then and also at the same time, an addiction to wanting to be more as well. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's, when you, that's that when you can bring those two together. Cause some people, some people are, are like, I'm just happy with what I've got, you know? Well, no, that's, I don't like that because if you've got a gift and you don't use it, you lose it. Mm. If you've got an ability, to, if you've got an ability to make a lot more and then impact more people and give more, but you don't because of apathy or or fear, then I think that's personally, I think that's wrong. You know, I I, I agree. It, it, I, I as a, you know, spending time listening to you and talking to you, you can see you you got a nice. It's it's a balance. So that's how I always answer it in terms of like because sometimes it's, people, balance. it's a tension. Okay, it's a fire. Yeah, like <laughs> right. But it's but it's. I totally get that because when you're when you're an entrepreneur and you're constantly thinking about how can you improve, make it more dynamic, make it more efficient, get a greater reach, etc. For someone that doesn't understand that as a, as a thinking concept, because if you have been in a job for a long period of time, it does structure you into a certain way of thinking. And thinking like an entrepreneur, as you know, is, is a different ball game. So that, that being said, is there anything that they need to, people listening to that, people watching this, right? What could they plan to, to make sure, this, like, because the, the, the thing is, Samuel, that, that people will actually listen and watch and actually you know, a small percentage will go out and do it. Some, regardless of what we say, will never do it. And, but for those that actually go out and do it, and if we could, if we can prepare them for a potential problems that they're going to face, what do you reckon they, what else would you give to them to give them some skills, tools to prepare for the potentials of putting those things together? Just to like a quick summary before mm. we shut off. What is it like, what the as, as in our original as in, sorry, going back to our original strategy of going out, finding high price, yeah, marrying that together, finding that, and securing 100K. So anything, what problems are they going to face? Anything you can, anything that you would advise, knowing your experience, what? Yeah, what I would say is that, the, that if you want to make a lot of money, you've got to... Inst- you've got to become a you've got to become a better bigger person so if, like if you want to go and find multi-million pound deals that you can then package up and pass them to investors you've got to be the kind of person that can find those deals and i teach property and i'll say property is the best investment property is amazing i teach property all day long actually i don't quite believe that i believe that property is the second best investment the best is yourself and I, I, if you want, if you want to make a hundred grand in 28 days, it, yeah, sure, sure, it's possible. Basically, you need four things in order to be able to do impossible things. First thing is you need to have the knowledge. Second thing is you need to be able to take massive action and the ability to take action on the knowledge. Third thing is you need um, consistency. You need to persist. If you, you, you know, it might not happen in 28 days, but it might happen in 28 weeks. You've got to keep persisting. And then the fourth thing is just going to absolutely shed loads of belief. Because if you don't believe you can do it, even if you have the knowledge, and I, I can give you, I can give you a bi- the perfect business plan of how to make that much money in that much time. You can give me the perfect business plan, and I, and I can give you all the training, and, and, and you can all this stuff, and you can persist, and you can even go and take action. But if you don't actually believe that it will happen, then it, it will not happen. So I think those four things to, together, impossible things start happening. Mm, nice man, I really appreciate that. Anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, you'll always have problems in your life. Um, <laughs> you'll always have problems, but the problems just become different. So the problems that I had when I first started out were things like, oh my, man, I'm scared to make this phone call to, the, to an estate agent in case I say the wrong thing and look stupid. And I'll be there for like 10 minutes with my hand shaking before pressing dial. That was my problem then. Now that's like pff, so stupid. I don't, I'm, I, because I'm bigger. Jim Rohn says, doesn't he? Don't wish for less problems. Wish that you had more skills. Don't wish it was easier. Wish that you were better. But you will always have problems. My problems now are just very different to the ones that I did have because I'm getting, as I'm getting bigger, my, in one sense, my problems are getting bigger probably, but mm. I'm just bigger to cope with them. So yeah, always expect problems, always expect hardships, but just become a bigger person. Enjoy the journey. Um, and, 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 and don't be afraid of what everyone thinks. Nice. And so I want to say thank you to you, Samuel. I appreciate you. And where, where do people find you? Where's, where's the best? Yeah. I do a, t- like you, Ed, 
and, and I really respect you know the content that you put out there. It's it's great. Um, it, it's great that you do that. So 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 serious respect. I have a YouTube channel as well, so I put a lot of content out. It's around property mostly, but also just business and mindset and development. But it's it's been around property, so you can just YouTube my name or Google me, Samuel Leeds, and uh, if you enjoy it, then awesome. Come spend some time with Samuel. All right, let's give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, man.